Yeah, we definitely started well. Um, that first quarter, sort of pressure, the pressure we put on on them is um, what we've what we're really setting ourselves for for this later half of the year. And um, yeah, and there was patches of it in the third quarter. And we probably just didn't maximise our opportunities going forward. But um, when we went forward as well, we forward sorry, we couldn't lock it in there, which was probably a bit. Um, yeah, it summed up our day as well. I think they spent about sixty five percent of the game time in their forward half. Um, I'm not sure um, at all because that's yeah, obviously that's what you strive for every week, and and that's probably what made us such a good team last year, and um, we're certainly working towards that. And um, part leaders, part coaches, everyone's got to you got to try and get your teammates up, and you sort of got to ask yourself like how can how can you make your your teammate better, and um, we're just not getting that at the moment, but that's something we're we're definitely working towards, and um, we want to get back as quick as possible. Um, it, well, the younger players are definitely holding up their own and I think that's probably one of the exciting things for us at the moment. You've got guys like Rory Laird who's playing amazing footy, just winning one-on-ones. He's, he's, he's beating some classy opponents out on ground. Um, Luke Brown, Jared Lyons came in again and had a very good game. Um, even like Tom Lynch as well, he's only played a handful of games. And we've got these guys that are really stepping up and um, you're right, we do need that middle tier and um, some of our leaders just to, to step up. We all need all need to play our role. Um, oh, it's good. It's good that they they're coming in playing some good footy. Oh, obviously you need a lift. You can't just leave it up to young blokes. You're you're definitely a better team when um, your leaders and your and your top players are playing better. Um, oh look, it's a lot of experience. Obviously, we we may lose, but um, we've had we've got guys like Mitch Grigg, Jared Lyons came in, played some good footy. Um, even Porps can go into the midfield as well, and um, we'll, we'll rotate other guys through. And it'll be probably it could be good for some young guys' development. Um, but I'm not sure if it'll happen. I'm not sure what. Um, obviously, Danger's very sore still. Um, probably unlikely at the moment. He. Um, He's struggling a little bit, although he's super tough. I don't know how he how he managed to run through that game, but um, I'm sure it shows his character and how tough he is. Well, it's it's weird seeing him run round, and he's got the one arm pumping, and um, oh, it's it, it definitely lifts you, and it, it's it's frustrating that we couldn't get up for him, and um, because we knew how much of an effort and how, and how much he cares for the team as well, and. He showed that on the weekend. Sits out and stops. What and not play? Um, well, no, that's guys get sore this time of year, and, and you got to play through it. Um, we need his experience at the moment, and and he knows that. And yeah, like I, I learned so much off him during games, and. He's just a voice out there we need. Oh, we haven't spoken about finals for the last few weeks. Unfortunately, we haven't been playing good enough footy to really speak about finals. So um, every week we go on with that with a focus to, to obviously play well that week. And um, last week was disappointing, along with along with this week. So all our focus and energy is purely going into Geelong now because we've got to start to beat some um, some top eight teams. If we if we want to start to be a good club again. I think it's more important just for the culture of your footy club, just to, to keep playing good footy um, and keep playing the way you want to, the way the coaches want you to play. Um, that's definitely the more important thing because we would say might like it. No one knows what's going to happen with that whole situation. No, not at all.
Yeah, it's going to be another big challenge. Obviously, we haven't beaten anyone in the top eight yet. Um, and they've been in amazing form. They're such a great club, um, playing the type of footy that you sort of strive towards. So it is going to be a huge challenge. Um, but as I said, it's going to, it'll be some good chance for some young guys to develop, um, get some bigger minutes through the midfield maybe without danger. Um, and yeah, to take on, I suppose, yeah, the, the number one team at the moment, um, it's definitely something we're going to have to do well and take with um, a lot of energy. And yeah, we really have to take it to them because we need to start winning games. Still the, the pressure on the ball carrier. Um, that's been a huge focus for last last month for us. Um, and again, it was good in patches on the weekend, but not consistent enough for the whole game. Um, and I think winning some clearances and, and just being um, oh, sort of calm with the ball and, and clean with the footy, because when we're going forward at the moment, um, we're just probably not maximising our opportunities. Well, he still brings that aggressive attitude. Um, he definitely sets a tone with the way he attacks the ball, um, the way he tackles, and just his voice out on ground, his demand of, of um, big Sammy Jacobs and, and other midfielders, he's, um, he's definitely he sets a benchmark for us. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm fine about it because I know, well, especially after well, Phil Harper's article, I, I speak to Nobs a bit and I know how they, they feel about me. So I'm, I'm comfortable with it, but I think there's a few out there that might think differently. I'm not sure. What do you think, Richie? <laughs> no, well, I think <laughs> I've spoken to Nobs and I think he's pretty happy with me. So I think he likes me. I hope he likes me. Yeah, definitely. Um, as part of the whole football industry, so um, that sort of stuff will happen. Um, hopefully, it's not me that gets forced out, but I don't think it will be. I've spoken to Nobs, and um, yeah, Phil Phil wrote a really nice article the other day, which which was good as well. Oh no, I've not even spoken to him about it. I just presume we're all good. We just speak about other list management stuff, how we can get the team better. Oh, there's always we're always looking for improvements in, in um, oh, and 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 looking at players that have a contract and how you can make a team stronger. So, um, just little thoughts around that. Is there? A, do I have an understanding about that? Or is there? A, um, Sure, maybe a lot of players haven't really looked into it, but definitely that's pretty much the only way you can, or we can, really get back into that sort of top end of the draft. Yeah, definitely. I think everyone sort of, a lot of players sort of, or well, what you build that relationship with people and um, you spend so much time with everyone at your first club and you sort of grow together. So I've, grown, I've come in a similar time as Paddy and Matthew Wright and a lot of other guys, Chad Petrenko, Sean McKernan, you grow with each other and you become really good mates. So it would be always be so hard to, to, I don't know, to leave or if you got pushed out. So I think everyone always wants to be a one club player. Ooh, I don't know, can we get Buddy? No, nah, I don't know, I'm joking mate. Oh, it doesn't bother me. Um, we obviously, you want to bring in players that um, fit in with your culture and, and fit in with the way that you're trying to play. So um, I suppose you leave that to Nobes and who, uh, who they think is best for that fit. Two years after this. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, my call. <laughs> so I'll stay. <laughs> Uh, ticked off me, who do you want now? <laughs>
I'll go bring someone else in, yeah.